What's up guys? Welcome back. Another video here. This principle applies to all engines, not just two JZs. So you could be building an LS, you could be building a JZ, an RB, whatever it may be. Oh, look at that, it all rhymed. Long story short, today we're talking about ring gap. We're going to make sure all the ring gap is good. We're gonna adjust the ring gap if we need to adjust it. I'm gonna show you how to do that. We are gonna install the pistons and the rods. Uh, we've already, the last episode, I showed you how to basically thoroughly clean and prep the block, set the bearings in the bottom end, and then as well as the torque procedure for the crankshaft and you know simple things to do, not to do, stuff like that. Today, we're, we're assembling the rotating assembly is basically what it comes down to. So enough talking. Let's hop right into it. Got the block sitting right here. Let's do it. So we're talking ring gap here, right? So I got a piston somewhat assembled here so that you guys can take a look at it. Kind of zoom out. So basically what you get with the rings, and this is for, you know, super beginners, but the bottom one, if you look here, there's two very small rings with a ring that has a bunch of waves in it, right? Those are oil scraper rings. We do not file those, okay? There's little ports in the piston. If you can see, there's little holes that shoot oil out. You guys see that? So basically what happens is the bottom of the piston oils the cylinder. We have the next one, this middle one, is what's called the compression ring. It's a really fat, beefy, heavy-duty ring. You'll see, too, it's usually a hair bigger than the upper ring. Now, the upper ring I don't have installed because the upper ring, we need to measure the ring gap, okay? So, the way this works is ring gap is associated with the type of power that you're going to be running as well as recommendations from the manufacturer of that ring, okay? So, what we have here, and this, you might have JE, you might have a different brand, but these are CP, so they're Carrillo or Carrillo Pistons, this is for 86.5 millimeter bore. The compression ratio is 9 to 1, okay? That being said, this application is going to be for a boosted high-performance application. So, what that means is there's going to be a lot of heat and a lot of pressure in the top area of the cylinder. Being that this is the top ring, that top ring is going to absorb a lot of heat and a lot of pressure. So if you look in here, real simply, right, ring gap, okay, well, what is it? It's the little gap you see right there between the rings, okay? The rings have to, they can't be a complete circle because you could never get them on the piston. They could never flex. They could never move. It would just be a bad deal. So the gap right there is what we're talking about now. Under heat and under pressure, the ring grows, okay? If the ring grows to the point where it touches each other, it has nowhere to go, but it will keep expanding because there's heat. And then what will happen is it starts to ride, increase the friction in the cylinder, and it starts to tear the cylinder wall up, or the piston ring will break. It will start to bend and flex and tweak, and it'll just snap. To avoid all of that, we need to set the ring gap okay the way you do that is that you always want to push it down into the bore you know a decent way so what i do okay grab a piston so here's an actual piston that's going in it this is actually number one so this is going to go cylinder number one but that doesn't matter what we're doing is we're working from six back to one okay. what we're going to do is we're going to stick this in here Basically flush the top of the, the circlip or the, the piston pin. The top of it's almost flush with the bore of the engine. Okay, it doesn't matter. You could be here, you could be a little lower, you could be a little lower than I am. But one thing to understand is that the bore is going to be slightly bigger up top than it is going to be at the bottom. And what you want to measure for 
is you want to measure for the tightest tolerance, hence why I pushed it down in the bore quite a ways, because that ring is not going to be much lower than it's sitting right now, even while the engine is rotating around. These pistons, a lot of people think they, you know, they go through a huge stroke in the cylinder. They don't. It goes from about there to the top. So what you're going to want to do now, you're going to want to grab a feeler gauge set and you're going to want to figure out what depth or what gap that you have in between them. Okay, so a feeler gauge set, if you've never used one of these, well, you're in over your head, but there is the internet for that. So basically, here's what I did. CP has recommendations, just like every other piston manufacturer, and they're all relatively close. They're all relatively uniform, but there is a ratio that you take the bore size, okay? So this bore is 86.5 millimeters across. So the diameter of the bore, follow me here, is 86.5. In inches, that's 3.41 inches. Now, they have different steps and I'm going to I'm going to clip in the chart that it says to use. It's simple multiplication. So in this application, we're using the 00055. So I'm going to take 3.41 because this is a turbo slash racing application. And I'm going to multiply the bore. So that's 3.41 times 0 0.0055. And what I end up with is that I need a ring gap minimum, okay, of at least 0 0.018 of an inch. It's basically 0.45 millimeters, but we're using inches scale here. So if you see that 0 0.018, that's 0 0.018 inches, okay? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to see if it will fit in between the ring. And I'm going to try to focus it here. If you guys can see, it will not fit, okay? See how it starts to wedge the ring down? See, we're no longer level. So what that tells me is that the ring gap is not correct. So what I got to do is I got to open this gap up, okay? Basically, we're going to start to file the edge of the ring. Now, there's ring filers. There's tools that are made to do this. I am going to do it the old-fashioned way. But I'd recommend getting a ring filer. Mine burnt up in the fire I had in this garage, and I have not replaced it yet. So we're going to make do, but we're going to make sure it's done right. So... You have to do this for every cylinder. Now, this is the, the top ring, okay? The secondary ring, the compression ring, that's what I was talking about, this big beefy one, needs to be bigger than that one. So if this is 0 0.018, right, that ring should be 0 0.024 of an inch, okay? You want it bigger because this ring is thicker. It's got more mass more heats can be generated into this ring than what can be generated into that ring, if that makes sense. This ring is going to grow more than the top ring. Even though the top ring is closer to the flame front, it is a considerably smaller ring, thinner, less mass. It's not going to be able to grow as much as the compression ring or the second ring, as it's called. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this back out, I'm going to file it, I'm going to reinsert it, and then I'm going to measure it again. You have to be careful about how much material that you're taking out, because if you take too much out, you can't add it back. The good news is this. The worst thing that can happen with a large ring gap is that you end up with a little bit la loss in power, a little bit extra blow-by, which is where the compression gas is, can actually get past the ring into the bottom end and vice versa the oil can get past the rings come up into the cylinder and get burnt out the exhaust neither is a catastrophic failure except for when you have the rings too tight they butt up to each other you break a ring land something like that happens you're in really really rough shape so enough talking show you we're gonna 
grind that down and get it perfect. Okay, so we got 018. 018, and again, what we're doing right now, this is the top ring. Okay, remember it wouldn't fit before. Now we're going to send it into its bore. Okay, you see the feeler gauge in there? Here's a little bit of rubbing, but it glides through very, very easily. That is what you call a loose 0.18. So the way I did that, you guys are probably like, okay, so I know what I need for ring gap. How do I get it to that point? Well, I'll show you how I do it. This is not by any means the way I recommend you do it at home. But essentially what I do, if you guys see here, okay, so I have a carbide disc. So I run it at a low speed and I let it just file down an edge of the ring. Okay, so if this thing will focus here, you will see where I actually filed it, which you can see on the right-hand side of your screen there. That is the side that I filed. You can tell because it's not perfect. Now, one of the things you're going to need to make sure you do, see where my finger is, the very, very top point? You need to make sure those have a slight round to them. You do not want them jagged because they will dig right into the cylinder wall and they will cook the cylinder wall. They'll create scoring in it. Okay, so I recommend, I recommend you buy a ring filer. They do not cost that much money. I am very careful about how I do this and what I'm doing. I have experience doing this. If you do not buy a ring filer and do it that way. But essentially you're going to go through, like this is for box six. So this is the, the upper ring or the secondary compression ring, I run those loose as well. And I'd rather have it have a little less compression and be completely safe in case these cylinders get too hot. All right, so I got all the rings, they're completely gapped, okay? So what we did on gap, I'll tell you what we did on gap, okay? We did on the primary, the upper ring, so the very top ring, and I'm gonna give you a demonstration here. If you look at this ring right here, it's thick, it's beefier than the other ring that comes in the package. This is a little bit thinner, a little bit weaker. This is the top ring. Now the top ring is gapped 0 0.018 of an inch. The compression ring, this boy right here, that will absorb more heat, has more room to grow, it's, it has higher mass, is 0 0.024, okay? So 0 0.018, 0 0.024, they are all identical to that because I spent about an hour uh, measuring and filing all the ring gaps. And again, per cylinder. So that over here, this is set six, this is piston six, if you take a look at it, piston six, five four three two one use the same bores as you do it all right so what you need to do before you install the piston with the rings assembled and i'm gonna show you how to clock those in just a second the biggest thing make sure the cylinders are oiled so you need to have oil all the way around in the bore as you can see that is the case as far as gapping them, here's how I do it. Everyone's got their way. Basically, you just 180 everything. So first oil ring, I have stopping right here, and that's the first oil ring. So be the one on the very, very, very bottom. So I have stopping here, and then the oil screen, the scraper part, it's got all the fins on it, as you can see there. I have stopping over here. The next one, I have stopping over here, and then if you look, the top ring, uh, let me zoom out, I have stopping right here, the compression ring, I have stopping right here. So as long as they're all clocked opposing, you're going to be fine. They're going to spin, they're going to twist anyway, so you don't have to focus on that too much. But basically what you're going to want, you're absolutely going to want to buy a ring compressor. So Wiseco, 
uh, sells these along with many other manufacturers. Get it in the bore size you need. So this is 86.50, right? So when I set it here, it's got a big tapered end so that it can compress the, uh, the rings as it's going down. And then once it gets to the bottom, which is this side, it has them all compressed. And then all you're doing is transferring them. See like that? transferring them from one section to the next so it's a nice transition you hit it with a mallet rubber mallet you don't hit it with a ton of force if it's binding or dragging you got issues but basically you take this tap 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 knock it into the cylinder make sure absolutely make sure uh, the crank is in the opposing direction of the connecting rod meaning the lowest point possible so that's how you do that. We're gonna install it. We'll drive it down. All right, so all of the rod bearings are in the large part of the rods, just like so. All right, once this is all assembled, so you see we got a gap here, a gap on that side, so they're opposing. Same with the oil scrapers, they're all opposing each other, okay? So the next thing you do is make sure this thing is clean. It's got to be very, very clean. And if it's clean, you're going to grab your ring compressor. You're going to lube the inside of the ring compressor. So I will show you that, but I got to set the camera down. Just like that, it's all lubed up. I use a combination of assembly lube and oil. And then if you notice, the ring compressor, again, the purpose of this, it's got a big end and a smaller end. So what you do is you slide this up over the piston, and then the piston goes right back down. So take this, take this, set it in, and then slide it up. So we got them all installed, except for one, because I'm going to go over the process again with you. So... Did this in order according to the proper rings. So we measured the rings for six. The rings for six went on six piston. It went in six chamber. Five, four, three, two. We're on the very last one. Again, make sure they're orientated properly. A lot of pistons don't have index marks to tell you which side is front. So make sure that your larger valve size which if you look at the piston you can see which one's larger is on your intake side all right once you're here we got it in the ring compressor right make sure there's oil in the cylinder which there is make sure the cylinder is clean make sure you got lube on the bottom and what i'm going to do is i'm going to smear that in right before i set it down all right ready to go again Keep in mind, bigger valves need to go towards the side that has the bigger valves, which is intake. You're going to take this very carefully. You're going to wiggle it around so it can find its little groove, just like so. So we got it right there. It's all lubed up, cylinders lubed up. Crankshaft journal bottom. And you're going to take this, the way I do it, little plastic bottom. It looks super dirty, but it's just really, really beat up. You're going to set that on here. And then you're going to finesse. Okay, so just like that, you're going to start to finesse. Now, what you're going to have to do with these ring compressors, if you look at the piston, they want to walk. They want to walk in the ring compressor. They'll kind of wedge. So you got to straighten them out periodically. Once they're straight, just little taps. You never, ever want to force it really hard because if you're having to force it, there's something wrong. So again, and then I move this towards the front. See, now we are almost in the bore, if you look, half of the piston is. The next two rings become more challenging. This one happened to go right in. Sometimes they will catch, sometimes they will bind a little bit. 
that piston is now in. And now, so what I do is take this, keep tapping. Once you're close to halfway down in the bore, that's when you need to get on the bottom and you need to start paying attention to where the rod is. So what I do is I cup it with one hand and I guide it right on to the, to the crank. So a couple more taps here. Okay, now we should see, yep, we can see that rod. So what we're gonna do is grab it with our hands like this and then tap it with the other hand, guide it down. So, just guided it down. It's now sitting, resting on the crank. You can also see a little bit of the bearing there as well. What I normally do, and it's a little bit excessive, but I always make sure the bearing is flush. So I push up on it, make sure it's nice and flush. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our cap, which is right here. We're gonna lube the cap up because right now it does not have lube on it. We're going to wipe it down first, make sure it's clean. Again, this is all about cleanliness. Wipe this off and then we're going to flip the motor upside down, bolt it up. You know, lose oil periodically. Hopefully you're keeping everything lubed up. Again, you do not want oil on this surface here or on the rod itself. So we're gonna take it, set it on there, just like so, rod bolts. Start them by hand. So that's gonna end it for this video. See you guys later on, thanks.